This is the largest ship lift in the world. Imagine 500 elephants being carried up to a 40-story building. That's exactly what this lift does. Ships enter this lift and are carried to a height of 370 feet. No matter how heavy their cargo is, they are safely transported to the other side in a matter of minutes. This particular lift is located at the Yangtze River and is a part of the Three Gorges Dam. Since the dam separates the river into two halves, a path is needed to bridge the two sides. The upstream region holds trillions of gallons of water behind its wall, while the downstream is where the stored water exits. This produces a stark difference in water levels on both sides. The difference can be as much as 300 feet. This separation meant that vessels had to be physically lifted or lowered to cross the dam. Now, dams have been around since the 1930s. How did engineers solve the height problem back then, especially since construction technology was limited and costly? The engineers came up with a staircase design. This is now known as a ship lock. A ship lock is a series of stairs that gradually lift a vessel. It solved a major problem for maritime traffic that required an undisturbed route to travel. Famous examples include the Panama Canal Lock in Lake Gatun. This lock allows 6% of the world's trade to pass through. A single vessel goes through a multi-step process of being lifted and then lowered back into the sea. While locks are still pretty much used today, they still have a lot of drawbacks. For starters, it takes anywhere between 8 to 10 hours for a vessel to pass. During peak times, ships could be stranded here for days. Moreover, ship locks require a lot of water to raise vessels to an unnatural height. A single transit consumes 27 million gallons of water. That's a lot, especially for areas like Panama that experience frequent droughts. In the long term, we have to look at the bigger picture. Due to limited space, a single lock handles a single vessel at a time. In the context of Panama, this means that only 40 ships can pass in a day. This is not only costly, but also inefficient at the same time. If only there was a way to lift all the ships in one go. That's where a ship lift comes in. The first ship lift was built in 1875, designed by Edwin Clark. It's known as the Anderton Boat Lift. Despite being 150 years old, this lift is still operational. It can lift boats to 50 feet, the equivalent of a three-story building. No surprise why it's one of the seven wonders of the waterways. So how does this steel monster work? The Anderton Lift transports vessels between the River Weaver and the Trent and Mersey Canal. It has two water-filled chambers called caissons. Caissons are essentially large sealed tanks that float in water. They are capable of carrying one or multiple boats. When a boat enters the lift, it is placed in one of the caissons. The hydraulic system pumps water into the caisson with the boat. Watertight gates close at both ends to ensure that no water escapes. Before the lift starts moving, the computerized system has to do a few checks like the level of the river, making sure the gates are sealed and secure, and once everyone's happy, and the computer, there's a little bit of a bounce, and then the descent begins. As the first caisson rises, the second caisson on the opposite side moves downward. This counterbalance ensures that the weight is evenly distributed, making it efficient to operate. Since River Weaver is at the lower level, vessels on this side have to be lifted to the Trenton Mersey Canal. The opposite is true for those approaching from the canal side. In this way, the Anderton lift can carry a weight of up to 250 tons, including the water weight. The lifting or lowering usually takes 10 to 20 minutes. It's brilliant to see a piece of technology as old as this still working to this day. The Anderton is one of the only two lifts in the UK. Ever since its construction, many other countries have tried to make their own version. Germany made one in 1934. This giant monster is located 34 miles north of Berlin. It can carry thousands of tons in just five minutes. It's called the Niederfinau ship lift. Being the oldest working lift in the country, it provides a pathway for cargo to enter the Baltic Sea from Berlin. Thousands of boats use it each year to climb a distance of 118 feet. The ships are lifted using 256 cables that are further attached to pulleys. 
Unlike the Anderton lift, the Niederfino can manage more than one vessel at a time. The weight of the water itself can be 2,000 tons, plus the additional weight of the ships could be up to 3,000 tons. So how does the lift carry this much? And being this old, is the lift even safe to use? What will happen in the case of an accident? Once all the vessels are placed in the caisson, a system of hydraulic and electrical energy pushes the lift upward. If the lift was to solely rely on electricity, the consumption would be too much. Four metal boxes serve as counterweights for the vessels being carried by the lift. These weigh almost 4,000 tons and reduce energy consumption in the process. Since the lift also carries passenger boats, the mechanism must be as secure as possible. Most people fear that a failure of cables can cause a sudden drop of the caisson, but these steel cables are incredibly strong. They have only been replaced once in its 100-year history. To make the lift even more safer, there's also a safety mechanism in place. On one side of the lift, there's a rotating iron spindle. In case of an emergency, the spindle locks the caisson in place and prevents it from falling. So for the most part, the Nieder Finau lift has been a reliable form of transport. In fact, it was so successful that the nearby ship lock was left abandoned. For 20 years, these locks were the only way to enter the Baltic Sea. This was a combination of four locks arranged one behind the other. Each lock could lift to a height of 30 feet. But there was a catch. Before we discuss that, if you liked the video so far, kindly take a moment to subscribe. We bring the latest news in the construction industry with two fun videos each week. Vessels as large as 600 tons couldn't easily pass this route. At times, vessels would have to wait up to five to six days just to pass. With time, Germany realized that it needed something bigger. Being a vital trade route, something had to be done. With the help of the Industrial Revolution, Germany made a steel monster that could scoop everything in one go. When this was first introduced, it was the largest of its kind in the world. While the lift did its part for more than 100 years, it just couldn't keep up. With around 11,000 ships per year, it had reached its limit. Moreover, the maintenance costs were also increasing. In 2022, a new lift was constructed right next to the old one. It consists of a lower dock, a ship chamber, a canal bridge and an upper dock. On the surface, the new lift looks more sophisticated than the old one. It's 200 feet taller and reduces time by two thirds. However, the basic principle is the same. Both vertical lifts are based on the principle of weight equalization. Ships weighing as much as 2000 tons can be lifted into the air at the touch of a button. It's amazing to see two marvels separated by more than a hundred years right next to each other. If you live in Germany, you can still take a ride in the old ship lift. Hundreds of small boats still utilize the good old Niederfino lift. You can also climb on its roof and take stunning photos of the countryside of Brandenburg. All right, so we have only discussed vertical ship lifts so far. But have you heard of a lift that rotates? That's right, it's called the Falkirk Wheel. This wheel is located in Scotland and is the only one of its kind in the world. The Falkirk wheel is used to connect the 4th and Clyde Canal with the Union Canal. The Union Canal is a hundred feet above the 4th and Clyde Canal. This very distance is being bridged by the Falkirk wheel. Sound fair? But why did engineers use a wheel instead of a vertical lift? Especially since the wheel looks far more complex than a vertical lift. Much like a vertical lift, the Falkirk wheel also has two caissons, one above and one below. These two work on a principle coined by Archimedes. If you don't remember who he was, it's the Greek physicist who shouted Eureka. One day when Archimedes was taking a bath, he noticed that when he got into the tub, the water level also rose. That's how he discovered a theory that formed the basis of the Falkirk wheel. His theory is that floating objects displace their own weight in water. When a boat enters a caisson, the amount of water leaving it weighs the same as the boat itself. As long as there's the same amount of water in both caissons, they both weigh the same. Each caisson is going to weigh 500 tons, regardless of whether it contains a boat. Since the weight of both caissons is equal, the wheel design requires very little energy. It only consumes 1.5 kilowatts of electricity. In comparison, the Anderton lift requires 22 kilowatts per operation. That's one of the many reasons why the rotating design was preferred. Its construction took nearly $26 million, 
a fairly big amount in 2002. It was inaugurated by none other than Queen Elizabeth II. If you ever board the Falkirk wheel, this is how it would look. Once your vessel is inside the caisson, two steel gates start to rise from the water. These gates will separate your caisson from the rest of the structure. If you fear heights, this is a warning because you will be floating 80 feet above ground. At this point, the wheel starts its rotation. 10 hydraulic motors begin to rotate the central axle that holds the outer arms. It slowly turns at about one eighth of a revolution per minute. At this rate, it will take you about four minutes to reach the lower basin. Since the weight of both caissons is always the same, the wheel remains balanced. The fourth Clyde Canal and Union Canal were previously connected via 11 locks. However, maintaining these locks was costly and needed regular repairs. Ultimately, these locks were removed and other alternatives were proposed. Many absurd but fun ideas like rolling eggs, tilting tanks, giant seesaws to overhead monorails were proposed. Unsurprisingly, they had to be dismissed as they weren't practical. In the end, the wheel won the approval since it required less space and was much quicker. The Falkirk wheel was part of a broader initiative called the Millennium Link Project. Its goal was to restore a navigable waterway between Glasgow and Edinburgh and revitalize Scotland's waterways. The Falkirk wheel not only achieved that goal, but stands as a proud element of Scotland's history. There's a lot of symbolism behind its design. The curvature of the wheel mimics the natural, graceful arc of a whale's rib cage. Other sources like the Celtic double axe and ship blades also inspired the lift's design. Which lift design was your favorite so far? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you're interested in water-related engineering, check out this video we made about a sea spanning bridge. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we will catch up in the next video.